Resistance load testing is the most convenient way of assuring that a welding power source is performing to the desired specifications. To demonstrate the test procedures, we'll use an SRH333 constant current power source, although the load bank can be used to test any welding power source. Load testing is done in five steps. First, the primary line voltage is checked on static power sources. Second, the open circuit voltage is measured. The third step is to check the power source at rated load. Then the minimum and maximum of each range in both AC and DC. Finally, the remote and other controls such as start, pre, and post flow are checked. The test procedure begins with checking primary line voltage. Since this is a three-phase machine wired for 230 volts, we'll check the voltage of all three phases, beginning with any two lines. Then check the other two phases. After the primary voltages have been checked, we move to the second step, measuring the open circuit voltage. The load bank's connected to the secondary terminals on the power source. The load bank and power source are turned on and the power source set to its maximum open circuit voltage position. The digital meter on the load bank indicates the open circuit voltage. This value is then compared with the specifications in the service manual. The chart indicates we should have 75 open circuit volts. Since the load bank said we had 79 volts, the open circuit voltage is acceptable. Next, we'll check the power source at rated load. This machine should have an output of 300 amps at 32 load volts. The power source control is set at 300 amps. Then the resistance load is increased by rotating the coarse and fine selector switches until the load voltage drops to 32 volts, or as close as possible. We then read the amperage. Output is within the rated load specifications. Next, we'll check the minimum and maximum of each range. The test points are obtained from the power source specifications under the welding current range column and the volt amp curve. Using the minimum and maximum amperage values found in the specifications, we determine the load voltage where the test will be made. Here, 36 volts for the high range and 28 volts for the low range. The control is set for maximum output. The load banks adjusted until the voltmeter indicates 36 volts or as close as possible to 36. Then the amperage is read. The specification said we should have 375 amps. We have 380 amps. Next we'll check the minimum of the high range. The load bank's adjusted as close to 28 volts as can be obtained, and the meter indicates 40 amps. The same procedure can be used to check the other ranges on the power source. The resistance load test has shown the power source open circuit voltage, rated load, and minimum and maximum ranges are all within specifications. The last step is to check the remote and other controls. The remote control is set at maximum. The power source and load bank are adjusted for a rated load test. The current drops, so the remote control is functioning. All five steps have been performed, and the power source is operating within specifications and can be returned to service.